Hi, this is Kevin. Um, this is the first of the uh, tutorials that I have associated with our assignment for Chapter 2 in the, the Zell 3rd uh, edition book. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of changing up the tutorials a little bit here. Um, at this uh, beginning here, uh, this is a new set. We're taking a slightly new approach. Um, so uh, here's what I think you want to do with the uh, the uh, tutorials. Uh, first of all, you want to play the tutorial and listen to my statement of the problem that we're trying to solve. It's probably going to be like the exercise that you have to do uh, for your coding assignment. Okay. And um, when I come to the end of that, I'll give you a hint that I've come to the end of that. And you can pause. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the design of the solution. Okay. And uh, for right now, I'm going to express the design in pseudocode. Okay. Um, one of the things that I think you want to do is you want to pause before you play and see my pseudocode and take a try at kind of jotting down the pseudocode, you know, come up with a design for the solution yourself. Okay. And uh, then you can unpause the video and see what I do for the pseudocode. Then when I'm done with the pseudocode, I'm going to I'm going to code the program, okay? Well, um, maybe not this week. Maybe next, or maybe this week. You might want to pause it before you see my code. You've seen this zero code. You might want to pause it and take a try on your own, okay? And then you could unpause it and see what I do and compare it to what you did, okay? What we're eventually trying to get to is you having confidence to work independently. And to be able to do that well, you have to kind of, uh, you, some of this follow the leader stuff is really important, okay? In the beginning, um, you know, in the current week, if you pause the video and you try to do this on, on your own, you might get stuck pretty quick or you might not. As the weeks go by, I'm expecting you to get more and more independent on this uh, so that you'll try to do these on, on, the, uh, on your own before you see what I do, okay? So that's what we're doing. Uh, so what are we trying to solve here? Well, <clears throat> we're trying to work with a series of strings that are going to be words. And we're going to create this thing uh, called a Mad Lib. Um, I think we can probably find out about Mad Libs on the web. Uh, let's do a search for Mad Lib. Okay, Wikipedia has an article. So... Uh, oh, this is a musical joke. So, so we wanted Mad Libs. And Mad Libs is a phrasal a template word game created by Leonard Stern and Roger uh, Price. So how do these things work? Well, uh, one person... Uh, had the book of Mad Libs and they were uh, kind of sentences or stories and they had uh, had blanks where you would fill in the blanks and you would um, you as the person completing the story would quiz another person you would say like give me a proper noun give me a verb give me an adjective and and of course you'd write them into the book um, on the paper uh, provided in the blanks and then you would read it back with the words filled in it was always a lot of fun okay because um <clears throat> the person providing the words and the names and uh didn't really know what sentence you were constructing and it was sort of engineered to be funny okay so we're gonna do that all right 
Uh, good. So, um, how's that going to work? Well, we're going to ask for the following things. Okay. We're going to ask for a proper noun. Okay. And then a verb. And then an adjective. And then a noun. Okay. And then we're going to print out the sentence uh, proper noun space verb and then a uh and then adjective and then noun and then a period okay all right and that's it okay so let's think about the design okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna show you my pseudocode for this okay now if you want to take a pause and write your own pseudocode before you see mine, this would be a time to do it. Okay, so now pause and we're back. So let's look at my pseudocode for this. Pseudocode is a great way to express a design, especially for simple programs. And one of the things that we're trying to concentrate on in the chapter is this uh, kind of uh, pattern uh, called input process output, often referred to as IPO, input process output. And um, it's a very high level pattern. Like you can almost take any computing problem and say, okay, it's got input, it's got processing, it's got output. Let's try to break my problem down into that. So how would you break down this Mad Lib um, a program that I described? How would you break it down into input processing and output? Well, here's how I would do it. Um, I decided that I can just take my pseudocode and have like three groupings of it. Okay, it's that consistent with those pseudocode rules. Well, the pseudocode's pretty flexible stuff. Okay, so related to input, I'm going to prompt for the proper noun. I'm going to prompt for the verb. I'm going to prompt for the adjective, and then I'm going to prompt for the noun. Okay, so I'm going to get one, two, three, four um, at, at pieces of input from the user, but, you know, by prompting them at the console. What kind of process am I going to do? Well, there's no real processing. I'm just going to take the inputs and I, I'm going to I'm going to string them together in a print statement in this output, and that's it. So, in um, uh, in the pseudocode here, we've kind of, uh, we've emphasized the pattern, input, process, output, and we've realized sometimes the parts are empty in the pattern. Uh, and so we know it's a uh, part of the input. We know that the processing is empty and we know what the output is. Okay, so we have our pseudocode, and as you can see, I simply type mine into a text editor uh, so I could show it on the screen. You could do that, or you could jot yours down on a piece of paper, okay? It, typically, the pseudocode that we have is, is a, it's like a sketch for the program that we're going to do, and we don't really hand it in, okay? It's for our benefit. Okay, we we create the code in the in the likeness of that sketch, um, and then we probably toss the sketch away. Okay, um, okay. So we've got this pseudo code. Let's create the code. Okay. So what are we going to call the program? Well. Um, this program is going to be called Madlib Machine. So new Python file. And we're going to call it Madlib underscore machine. Okay, no dot pi because it puts it in there itself. Okay, and we have this. And starting here in uh, 
in uh, the work we're going to do for chapter two, we're going to start to do something slightly different at the top of the programs. Um, in uh, chapter one, I was showing you that we could put a comment in with the name of the file, and we could put a comment in with a statement of the intent of the file. And those things are, um, I kind of patterned them after what was being done in, in, the, in the Zell uh, textbook. But, you know, the fact is that most programmers don't put the name of the file in the file. If you want to know what the name of the file is, well, you go up to the editor tab and you see what you're editing. Or you go over to the navigation panel and you see what you're able to open. Okay, so putting the name of the file in the file is redundant and doesn't really hold up to maintenance and all that kind of stuff. Likewise, um, having a having a comment at the beginning of the program in which we we state the intent, it's a nice idea. But there's actually a special kind of comment that uh, that. Uh, Python programmers use in order to document uh, pieces of Python code as to what they are and what their intent is, and it's called a doc string. Okay, and so we're just going to begin here with chapter two. We're going to create a doc string. Okay, so what does a doc string look like? Well, it's a special kind of comment, it's a comment surrounded by three. Um, quote marks, what I call double quotes. So quote, quote, quote. And as soon as you put in three double quotes, you'll see that it created the three ending of double quotes. Okay. And um, I'm just going to say doc string goes here. Okay. That's where the doc string goes. Okay, what's what's a doc string? Well, it's part of the documentation for the program. Okay, um, it it always includes a statement of what this code does. Okay, so here um, this is a doc stream that applies to the whole file. This Madlib machine uh, dot pi, uh, and what does what does this do? Well, um, I have an expression of this, and I'm just going to copy it from my already baked uh, program. So here's the doc string that I want to use. Build and print a Mad Lib sentence. Okay, that's it. All right. Now that, for the beginning of a program file, is more professional than what we did back in uh, chapter one. So this is what we're going to do from here on in. Okay. Now, uh, this looks odd. I don't, well, let's put two blank lines after it. One thing that you should know about um, these doc strings is there's actually a way to have a multi-line one. Okay. So... Um, what we're going to have is we're just going to have a simple uh, sentence that says, what does this do? What it, What is its intent, right? Okay, what if it, What if you couldn't get that on, on the one line? Well, it's possible to take these initial three uh, double quotes and have a line break there. And then you can have a, a line break... Uh, after your text, and then you could really have a, uh, you you know, you could have text that went on and on, and with line breaks in it and all that kind of stuff. And there's some doc strings that we'll do before the course is over, um, where they're kind of designed to have more than one line. Okay, but for us here now, uh, we just want to go back to the single line doc string that starts a program file, okay? But I wanted to show you that doc strings are potentially more versatile than that. Okay, all right, so we want to, we want to set up the program with a main and a, a call to main, so let's do that. Two blank lines, def main, 
empty parens. Okay. Um, if I don't put any code into main, well, let's, let me just uh, try this. If I don't put any code into main, and then I have a call to main here, um, it doesn't like that. And uh, indent expected, because I think what it says, I'm expecting some code to go into main. Okay, so if you want a placeholder for code, there is a statement that says do nothing. It's pass. Okay, and you can put that in there. And then the the Python interpreter is happy um, that you at least have a valid uh, program. So you could actually run this. Let's, let's go back. You could right click and say you want to run Madlib a machine. And it would run it. It doesn't do anything. Um, but uh, pass um, is the thing that you can put into um, you can put into your program and it essentially says uh, I'm sorry essentially says do nothing here okay well we want to do more than nothing okay so now we have to put in the in the real code and we're going to refer back to our pseudocode which again is is our notes it's our sketch right it's, you're not going to hand this in um it's not going to go into the program proper um this is the sketch that we're building the real thing from okay so we're going to want a prompt for a proper noun let's get started with that okay so let's look uh, instead of me typing i'm just going to take the code from the one i've already coded and tested and i'm going to bring it over here and put it in so um the variable that I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna keep in is is called proper noun, and I use a call to input in order to prompt for the input, and you will notice that I have a string that ends in a colon, and then there's a space such that when the user is typing in their input, they're not right up against the colon. That's why we have this space after the colon. Okay, and how would that go? Um, one of the things we can do is is uh, to um, uh, to test this as we put it in. So let's uh, test that. So uh, please enter a proper noun. Uh, let's just say uh, Kevin and enter it. And that was it. Okay, that's it. Okay, so now we want to, I said, what did I say? We're going to get a noun a verb and add a uh, proper noun a verb an adjective and a noun okay so let me bring over the one for the verb there's the verb please enter a verb okay and now we're going to bring over the one for the adjective Please enter an adjective. And very last is going to be a noun. OK. Let's take a look at this. OK, so the part of the pseudocode that we've done, we got the proper noun, the verb, the adjective, uh, the noun. Uh, all those things are part of the input, and they're all grouped uh, together in our uh, code, right? Okay, so that's the input part. Uh, there's no processing part, and then we have uh, the output part, print the complete sentence. Now, for me, if I'm moving on to another part, I usually leave a blank line in between. Okay, and uh, let's just see what my print looks like. Again, I've already, I've already coded this, so you won't have to watch me. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a typical print, okay, um, the proper noun, comma, 
the verb, comma, at the string that just has A in it, uh, comma, the adjective, comma, the noun. The noun, uh, the plus uh, sign, noun plus period is going to concatenate the period just on the right side of the noun. Okay, that's going to give us a period at the end of the sentence uh, without um, an intervening sp space. All these other, um, all these other variables have a comma after them. Okay, we have a comma separated list of things that we want to print. And implicit in the comma is print this, then separated from the next one with the space, then the next one, then a space, then the next one, then the space. So we're going to get spaces all the way through this last thing that we've done with the noun plus a period this uh, concatenation glues these two uh, together without an intervening space. Okay, so uh, we're just about ready to go, ready to test it. I gave us uh, two blank lines before the call to main. And let's give it a run. Okay, so it asks us for a proper noun, let's say uh, Kevin. Okay, and a verb, let's say, is, and an adjective, let's say, massive, and let's say, twit. Okay, and then it prints out the sentence, Kevin is a massive twit. Now, a twit is a, sort of a British uh, insult, okay? And it's the kind of thing that they used to say on Monty Python quite a bit. Uh, and it turns out that Python is named after the show Monty Python. So it's named, well, named after the comedy troupe. It's not named after the snake. The snake is, but the comedy troupe is perhaps named after the snake in, in some way. I don't know the answer to that. But the language is named after the comedy troupe. Okay, so Kevin is a massive uh, twit. Okay, now what would have happened if we hadn't done that trick in the end where we did a concatenation between the last variable and the period? So what if instead of concatenating those two together with the plus, what if we just said noun, comma, period? Well, we wouldn't get the kind of look that we're looking for. Okay, so let's say uh, Kevin is massive twit. Okay, see how we get the space in front of the period? Okay, so that's why we want to come back and uh, fix that by uh, having a plus it's saying that we want to glue together the string, um, the string that's in the variable noun plus the period. And, and that's going to give us what we want. Okay, and again, let's just do one more test. And we'll say, uh, Kevin was... Uh, mild twit. So now it says, Kevin was a mild twit. Okay, so Mad Libs were a lot of fun. Okay, and uh, uh, there were a lot of unattended consequences because the person who was filling in the blanks, uh, they knew what the sentence was, but the person who was uh, giving the words, they didn't. And, um, you know, a lot of fun happened. Okay. Uh, and this is usually a good way to practice um, combining um, combining character strings to make a, a sentence or a paragraph or something like that. And it's a nice thing to uh, practice. Okay, so how did we do against the pseudocode? I think we did pretty well 
just going to put them kind of side by side there. Oh, that doesn't work. Yeah, maybe that. So, um, uh, first we did the input. We skipped the processing because we didn't have any. Then we did the output. Okay. Did we, um, did we copy the pseudocode into our code? I had a version of this. Uh, in fact, my prior version of this, I was kind of showing the students, uh, you know, copying the pseudocode in, in with uh, the, the proper uh, uh, Python code as sort of a, oh, kind of a crutch, sort of a learner's uh, trick. But the fact is that people usually don't do that. And so I'm re-recording it here to make a couple of changes like one change uh, from the last version that we have is that we're using these uh, doc strings. Uh, but the other one is um, that we're not including any of the pseudocode in here as uh, comments. And generally speaking, um, uh, let's see if I can get that back. Yeah, there it is. Generally speaking, um, when we have some kind of, uh, uh, say, a sequence of uh, possibly three, but it turns out uh, two things in our pseudocode. Uh, yeah, we just do something like we group them. So we, uh, you know, so we say, well, this is all one thing. And then we skip a line. So we say, this is all one thing. We know they're different. Uh, we're trying to emphasize that because we skipped a line. Do we need to put a comment in, in to say what we're doing? The fact is that um, I'm eventually going to teach you to not do that, right? The fact is that uh, programmers, as they learn the trade, um, they look at, say, these four statements and they go, oh, he's prompting for the input. Here's where he gets the input, okay? And then they look at the statement here and they go, oh, here's where he creates the output. Okay, the code speaks for itself, right? Um, now, in the beginning, that might seem like a little bit of a stretch, okay? But um, it typically, you won't see experienced professional uh, programmers uh, give us a lot of uh, one-line comments. Now, um, it, here's what the here's what I tell uh, people as a guidance for uh, what's a good comment and what's a uh, bad. Um, a good comment is a comment that's, you know, short and descriptive and uh, it either talks about the intent of the code to come, okay, or it, um, it, it points out that something tricky is being done. It's sort of a watch out, okay? But what we don't want them to be is any kind of a, a another expression of what we're doing. Every time we express the same thing more than once, well, then we need to maintain it in more than one place. So this kind of look where we've taken, again, the pseudocode here, which is pretty straightforward and simple and well organized with this input process output. Um, this uh, this is pretty good. It looks pretty lean, okay. But um, I think you're going to come to appreciate it in the you know in kind of in the the genre of less is more, okay. Um, all right, so that's that. The, uh, the exercise that you're going to do is similar, but not the same. So uh, go work on that, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.